Hi, I'm Bill Lang. Okay, so you've got a great idea for a business, or you want to turn your hobby into a successful enterprise. How do you do it without becoming another small business statistic? Despite the myths about new business failure, startups actually have a good chance of survival. Around two thirds are still operating after five years. Still, this figure highlights the challenges awaiting entrepreneurs. In this episode, successful business owners give us their insights into some things startups can do to increase their likelihood of success. First up, John Anderson, the founder of Kentucky Tours, discusses the major considerations for startups. First thing I say is, is it commercial? You're going to put a lot of time and effort and money perhaps into this idea. Are you going to get a return for the amount of effort that you're going to put into it? And a lot of people come to me with some what they think are brilliant ideas, but when we talk through, we, I say, well, who, who's going to buy it? Uh, is it going to be commercial? So that would be one of the most important things. The second thing, I mean, I'm really thinking off the top of my head, is a lot of people want to run before they walk. A lot of people have see successful people, but they don't know for every successful one, there's probably 50 others that failed, but they don't see the failed ones. So they think it's easier than it is. So you've got to have patience. And the third, perhaps off the top of my head, would be most people, uh, particularly entrepreneurs, think they're going to succeed quicker uh, and they are undercapitalized. And when you don't, if the business doesn't give you the, re the say the revenue as quickly as you think, um, you've got to have sufficient capital sort of to be able to draw on to keep the business going. Because a lot of businesses, I've met people at this conference today that have just started. Now, one thing is to start the business, but the second is to take it to that next stage and keep it, keep it going. And then once you're on a roll, you never get complacent. You've got to keep, you've got to keep driving the business uh, till eventually, in, in the case of Kentucky, we got a critical mass, and once you have a critical mass, that opens up a whole lot of other opportunities. Your business plan should help you understand what makes your business unique. Differentiation refers to the things that separate you from your competitors in the minds of customers. Knowing your points of differentiation, also called your unique sales proposition, or USP, will help you promote your uniqueness to the customers and ensure you use these differences to your advantage. Let's listen in as Dr. Jürgen Klein, the founder of Jurlik Cosmetics, advises a startup operator of the importance of identifying your USP. What sort of advice can you get me to give me about getting it into the shop? What is your USP, the unique sales proposal? Right. So with a new product and uh, let's say go from a small product to a big company, you have to create a niche no matter how small it is, the niche where you have no competition. So you need a unique sales proposal. Christine believes her niche is treating skin problems. Well, what I find, I actually specialise in skin conditions with eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis. And you have to be very, very careful with your claims because and then they will say, you are not a doctor, yeah. you are not mm. a scientist, you are mm. not this and not that. Dr. Klein continually comes back to the one question. What makes Christine's product stand out from the rest? People just find it so rejuvenating on their skin, like their skin mm. just feels so softer and it's so unique. The smell of it, they love mm. the smell of it. It's Are you aware relaxing. that there are probably five and a half thousand natural cosmetic companies no, in the world market? No, I wasn't actually. <laughs> or, uh, that is an understatement. There are probably yeah. 15,000, mm. um, which are a bit bigger than you, that they all say the same. It can be a competitive jungle out there, which makes identifying your USP all that more important. Always define points of differentiation from the customer's perspective. That is, they must ultimately lead to a benefit for the customer that gives them a reason to buy. The minute you think you know it all is precisely the point where your business is most vulnerable. One key to startup success is to never stop learning. Continue to ask for help or advice from a trusted friend, mentor or business coach. Despite his vast experience, celebrity agent Harry M. Miller keeps a close handle on details and regularly seeks advice from trusted confidants. When you start your own business, you're the driver. 
And some people are great lieutenants, but no good in charge. Because when you're in charge, you have to pull your own socks up every morning and then run around pulling everybody else's up or making sure they're pulled up. And it's quite difficult. I still ring up people whose opinion I respect and say, what do you think of this, what do you think of that, and vice versa. In summary, three keys to startup success are to manage capital and cash flow, to differentiate your product or service, and to ask for help and advice when you need it. Download the business action plan for this episode and visit the starting a business section on nab.com.au to learn more about the keys to startup success.